I don't, I remember walking toward the door to leave the party. I don't actually remember even getting into my car. I don't remember driving at all. And the next thing I remember is I was out of my body above the smash car. My physical body was leaning against a tree, like sitting with my legs straight out and a police officer was crouching over me. I assumed he pulled me out of the car. I never checked on that. Um, the, so I was in the white light. I didn't have any experience of actually leaving my body. It was just all of a sudden I was in the white light. So, um, Dr. Brock, welcome to the channel. We're really happy to have you. Um, and before we get into it, I just want to uh, ask you one question. Okay. Um, and that's, uh, what were your thoughts or beliefs, feelings about the afterlife before your NDE? Um, that is a good question. I, you know, I was more of a scientific kind of math kind of guy, and I had a feeling there was something, but I would never describe it as spiritual or religious in any way. Um, I never really thought about it. You know, I mean, the things I actually thought about it were from Star Trek, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, you know, from sci-fi things. And I guess that was yeah. the beginning of opening up my mind to that, really. That's interesting yeah. because, I mean, I'm not a Trekkie, so I'm not going to pretend I know anything about Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. But I do know that there have been tons of uh, references in, in, I think, multiple um, seasons of that show. Or not Wait, yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, I've watched all the different Star Treks. And I mean, it, in the original one, which I'm talking about, there there was implications about it. But in the later ones, I mean, it's very directly it's more obvious, talking right? about things and, you know, in other dimensions and stuff at school. The ones that have very direct spiritual things in it is Deep Space Nine. Deep really Space that. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's start from the day it happened back in uh, in your early twenties. Yeah, nineteen seventy six. Um, you know, yeah, nineteen seventy six. So, what were you up to, and and how did you die? Well, I had been li living. I spent my childhood in uh, Rye, what's called Rybrook, New York. Now, it was part of Portchester, New York, which is in the U.S., about twenty miles north of New York City. Mm -hmm. And um, but I was living out in Colorado and I had come back East to visit my parents. Um, I drove back with a friend of mine. So we drove back in his car. So I borrowed my mom's car to go to this party. I, you know, someone, my roommate in Colorado was a friend that I grew up with. So we were, you know, we heard about this party from someone who we went to high school with. So we went to the party. Mm -hmm. I was definitely drinking and some <laughs> other things that I don't do anymore, but um, like someone in their twenties. <laughs> yes. In the seventies. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's, it's kind of a funny, cute story because I actually was going to leave my car there with the idea that I could go back and talk to the young lady who was having the party. And so I said to her, I needed to leave my car there. And I did. And I was having my friend drive me back to my parents' house. And, you know, about halfway there, I realized my sister needed to use the car the next day. So I had him drive me back and I got the car. Mm. And <clears throat> I do remember leaving, going to leave the party. And, you know, I was definitely too high to drive. But in those days, people didn't really think about that. And I was young and mm -hmm. foolish, let's say. So I, I don't, I remember walking toward the door to leave the party. I don't actually remember even getting into my car. I don't remember driving at all. And the next thing I remember is I was out of my body above the smash car. Mm -hmm. My physical body was leaning against a tree, like sitting with my legs straight out and a police officer was crouching over me. I assumed he pulled me out of the car. I never checked on that. Mm -hmm. um, the So I was in the white light. I didn't have any experience of actually leaving my body. It was just all of a sudden I was in the white light. There was, I, it was all white light all around me where the car was in my body. It was dark there. 
behind me there was like a big circle of a different shade of white within that circle there was like a white outline of a being radiating light off of it mm. um it was a i'm a very kinesthetic person even now very you know touchy feely kind of a person and mm. um so the feeling was just i'm always trying to figure out how to describe it because it wasn't like this ta-da you know super intense thing but it was just everything was really okay like walking on the most beautiful summer day where it's almost like the air feels like you're in water you know it feels so nice kind of thing and um it just you know i saw my body there it, it made perfect sense that my <laughs> it didn't bother me you know i seemed to have flashes of things that that i thought were problems were not problems nothing really specific but just kind of knowing everything in the world was okay. Um, did then you feel the, disconnected? I did. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that at all. I mean, in one way, I felt very connected. It was like right. just part of everything, and it just everything seemed all right. The car smashed, my head. Yeah, you, know, you can. I don't even. <laughs> the scar goes all the way back here. My head was cracked open, and it just uh -huh. seemed all right. And. Um, just like everything was okay in a way, like every single thing was okay. And did you have sort of like an all knowing experience at that point or? It, it was kind of like that, but it, again, that sounds very grand compared to, it, I don't know, I'm always trying to, it was more like being the knowing, you know, just like you fitting in. And like I said, everything made sense. And mm -hmm. um, so, it so was like, like knowing just, everything, I, but it wasn't like this grand, big ta-da thing. It was yeah. this very gentle, loving, soft thing. <laughs> yeah, that was like the perfect transition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so then the being behind me said, you have to go back. Your father wants you to stay. I knew right then that the father that being was talking about was God, not my physical father. Cool. So I went back into my body and came to three days later in the hospital. So let's talk about um, in terms of your, your vision and what you saw or felt, yeah. because I know you, you're, like you said, you're, um, you know, you're feeling kind of guy, but uh, if you, if you can describe sort of what it was that you saw visually for those that are watching that haven't had an NDE, um yeah it it was really just it was way more feeling than seeing so what i saw was just this white light and down there was not <laughs> the way that i learned to describe it came later when i met one of the spirit the first spiritual teacher i met and he started talking about certain things and when he said those words it's just like ah it finally made sense mm -hmm. there was a time after that that i didn't really tell anyone because i mean i knew it was true inside of me but my mind was you know it, it wasn't now it was a long time ago and the only time i had heard anything like that was in science fiction so mm -hmm. um but he started talking so he was an islamic sufi sheikh teacher and he okay. started to talk to me about jesus and mary mm -hmm. and mary's love of god and that when he talked about it's like even now that it's kind of because there's something about it that's kind of a feminine loving energy and mm -hmm. when he said that it's like oh that was the love that i felt when he talked about jesus and i knew that being behind me was jesus so it was it at only at that point where you really made that connection or did you sort of always feel like it was that way well i i knew what it was i just didn't know how to explain it so when he right. used those words it was like oh that's it you know it was like a a light went on and everything kind of like yes. that yeah right again it's very feeling as opposed to visual for me and still mm. i'm still like that a lot wow. but that's extraordinary i mean that's yeah wow just to come to that realization or to, or just to have that validation you know I, I right that's imagine. what it was like yeah, yeah i can't imagine how amazing that must have made you feel yeah. It is like, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew I wasn't, but you know, it, there was no, no I, know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, you know, like, I, cause, and I want to talk about OBE, OBEs and stuff with you um, okay. later, 
but um but i get that and uh, i'm also curious like um i love to ask people who have had ndes like what it yeah. was like when you first because this was a long time ago because you said it was like back in 76 right? yeah 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 so i mean there was no youtube we couldn't we didn't have yeah. these testimonials available and well, so accessible like yeah. today yeah so my question is like um do you remember do you recall the first time you sort of spoke out loud about this with somebody um i you know i don't really but i know that i so i went back to call this was in the northeast i went back to colorado and was there for a little while i did mention it to a friend of mine there and part the really the probably i mean one of the coolest things that happened is my life just started getting moved in this spiritual direction and one of the things that happened so i went back to colorado i did mention it to a few people but not even know what to make of it and um when I moved back to Westchester, New York in Tarrytown, one day someone knocked on my door and it was a long time ago. Now if someone knocks on my door and I don't know who it is, it's like, you know, because yeah. everyone texts. And then exactly. it was people just came and there was this a very pretty woman at the door and she said, oh, I'm the sister of your friend from Colorado. And she told me, some, she said some interesting things about you that I wanted to talk to you about, and which was a near-death experience. And she introduced me to the Sufi Sheikh. Okay. So, I don't know, a few months ago, all of a sudden it hit me, wow, this is so cool that this woman just showed up at my door. <laughs> you know? okay. So, yes, there was no internet, but whatever that, like the internet that connects us spiritually mm -hmm. was happening, and things in my life have just happened like that where i've met people teachers and you know i so often say my near-death experience was a kick in the butt to make me realize that i have to be spiritual basically so, so you basically stay on that spiritual spiritual path since that day yes amazing That's yeah amazing. yeah it's, and i'm sure there's been a huge developments over time and you know, yes, as you see definitely. on that path, that's, that must be incredible. You must have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I do. I have amazing stories that even, you know, now I can look at it and see how amazing it is. But, mm -hmm. you know, even I'd have these really cool things happen, but even for quite a while, it was like almost embarrassing and shy to talk about it. Now I can say just how amazing it is. And I don't feel like I'm being egotistical or, you know, just, I mean, something happened a few years ago when I was, it was around Thanksgiving and I had started posting stuff online. And so I was always looking for stuff to post and Thanksgiving. And I came across this email from a client who had a miscarriage and she was very sick and her friend kind of forced her to come see me. She didn't believe in heal the kind of healing I do. And the doctor said, forget about ever having a kid will be lucky to save you at this point. After two sessions from me, she wrote me this email saying, thank you so much. I don't know what you do, but the doctors are saying I'm getting better. They can't even believe it. Yeah. And I came across this email and I go, wow, that is really cool. You know, yeah. like when I'm doing it, it just almost seems all normal. And then, I don't know, when I read this email that time, I was like, wow, what I do is really cool. And Again, in a way where I was almost looking as if someone else does, you know, not feeling egotistical, just, I mean, it is amazing. That's yeah. what I could say. And it That's makes me cool. so happy. That's the cool thing. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, obviously you had an out of, like extraordinary uh, out of body uh, experience when you had your NDE. Have yes. you had any sense in meditation or astral projection or anything like that? Nature? Um, yeah, I, well, yes. So what I try to do is, more called soul travel where there is you know leaving the body and going to the soul level as opposed to the astral level which is mm -hmm. um sometimes it's a little harder because it is almost like there's nothing there it is just to, again kind of like how my nde was just this kind of knowing and feeling thing that's what it's like and see i start to say it i kind of want to close my eyes and just it's yeah, almost like falling into a pool with the perfect temperature water. Uh, nice. Yeah. yeah. When did you start doing that? And how did you get into it? 
Well, the it started with so the Sufi Sheikh started teaching about that stuff, and there's certain meditations to facilitate that, and a lot of you know he was he would talk a lot about what would happen after we die. And mm -hmm. I know the term near-death experience was started around then, but he didn't use that. And he had a near-death experience, a lot of the other people that studied with him too. Um, How did he refer to it? He just referred to it, uh, you know, I don't even remember, He, but he would talk about like what happens after we die. And it, um, well, one thing I can tell you is most times I would ask him anything specific, like you're asking me, he would say, you don't need to know that. <laughs> and so. Um, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was very, and even now when people are trying to, I say to people, if you can put your finger on it, it's not it. So it is this amazing thing. But so in the Sufi tradition, they use stories a lot. And these Sufis were Mevlevi dervishes that follow the teachings of Jalaluddin Rumi, who's the poet Rumi, that people read those poems and they're these love poems and self-discovery. But he, he wrote this thing called the Mathnawi, which was, you know, a very extensive book. A lot of it in, in stories and poems and things conveying spiritual teachings. So a lot of what this guy would talk about would be stories, some from his life, there was this funny little character also that this guy Idri Shah wrote some books about called Mullah Nasruddin. And his, when he was young, he was very intelligent, but he was kind of like a wise ass. And so someone put like a spell on him that he would always be wise, but people would always laugh. <laughs> so there are these funny little stories that, you know, so within the stories, there was a lot of knowledge and stuff. And it is done in a very moving kind of way where it is, you know, I mean, we can know it in our heart, but we can't know it in our mind. So when you're asking these specifics and I go, hmm, I don't even remember, but you yeah. get the feeling. And um, so in the Islamic tradition, there's the ocean of divine love and benevolence or some, the, the ocean of mercy and compassion. There's a few things, but that, he would talk about that and it's just that love that's all around us all the time. Yeah. And did you identify with any particular re religion before your NDE and afterwards as well? I, I was born in a Jewish family. So I, you know, if people asked me, I would say I was Jewish. I, you know, I went to Hebrew school. There were some things in the Bible that really caught my attention, but as far as the, the really mystical things there, you know, the story of Hanukkah where the, the oil in the in the light lasted for eight days, even though there was it just something in me like, whoa, but just some mystical experiences. But I wasn't really that interested, really. So mm -hmm. I did, but just because I was told that's what you do, you know. Right. But were you bar mitzvah? I was, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I mostly did it because I got a lot of money. <laughs> that was my <laughs> motivation. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of the like STEs, and I'm not talking about like STDs or anything. Yeah, yeah. STEs, right? Um, uh, spiritual transformative um, experiences, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, what would you say can constitutes an STE? Yeah, I think it could start from anything. I think it's important to understand you're never done with this, and there's always more to do. And I, you know, there's. I mean, sometimes the littlest thing, I mean, you have kids. I mean, that's like, that's like, <laughs> you know, a spiritual experience every day. You learn so much. That's and, true. You know, there's the practical things of what you do for work. And, um, you know, I was a total jock growing up. I learned so much playing sports, watching Star Trek. Another TV show was The Dead Zone that was very, I mean, he had a near-death experience in there. And it's mm -hmm. very... His experience, a lot of it was very similar to mine, even though that's fictional. Um, okay. Yeah, I just think it's this ongoing process. And I, you know, like to find people that are very wise that can teach me. And, um, you know, it, it's always like, oh, yeah, I made it. And then like a year later, you think, wow, I definitely didn't make it then. And then, mm -hmm. you know, but I know not to think I made it now, but I know it keeps going. And right, keeps it's going. always progressing. Yeah. yeah. 
I was developing. Yeah. So, so yeah, the religious part, I, I am, I'm not against religion because within religions are a lot of really cool spiritual people. I just think, you know, the dogmatic part of it and some people use it in a way that are, that is not what I really believe, you know, but even in the Catholic religion or the Jewish or the Islamic, you know, these very traditional religions, there are some amazing spiritual people. So Rumi was Islamic. So part of what he wrote about was, you know, it's, <clears throat> I'm actually preparing a talk about my experiences with the Sufis and Rumi. And I went back and read the beginning of the Mathnawi, and it starts with, um, it starts how a lot of things in the Islamic religion in the most, the most merciful and the, in the name of the most merciful and the most compassionate. And then it goes into this is the Mathnawi. It, it says it is the root of the root of the root of the religion. And it's like, ah, but he was, he was Islamic. So, but that thing of the root, of like really getting to the, you know, the real core of it, it's really great. Right. What would you say that is the real core? Love? Yes. I mean, to put into one word, but, he, yeah. you know, there's many kinds of love. And I think, you know, how we love our children, that is, you know, that time when you can look past how annoying they are <laughs> and how much you love them. <laughs> like that, that thing that moves you past the part you don't like to, well, so I know with my daughter, I mean, she is a great kid, so I shouldn't, it's not that she's not, but it, it's like you just have to surrender to that love and there's nothing you can do about it. You are powerless and that is the love, the spiritual love is like that. You know, I recently watched a Star Wars thing, The Mandalorian on uh, Disney+, oh, yeah. Plus, yeah, and I there's Baby Yoda. And every yeah. time I see Baby Yoda, it's like, Oh, baby Yoda and that love. <laughs> yeah, so, so cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what about astral projection? I know you, you you do soul Yeah. travel, but what do you think of astral projection? And have you ever tried that? Uh, I haven't tried that specifically, no. Um, so there's, <clears throat> so I, I work with people all over the world. And it is when I'm working with them, there is something like we're together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can do things energetically for them. And it is just like they're there. And I have a feeling that's so when you start to say astral projection, I could feel part of me starting to leave my body. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling I am doing that. I don't use those words. So there's the physical level, the astral, causal, mental, etheric and soul levels. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is go up to this highest level. It's so just level. in the astral level, there's a lot of, there's, you can do a lot of good stuff there, but there's a lot of kind of yucky stuff there too. Closer to the physical and, mm -hmm. you know, all our incomplete things we think about in our mind end up, it's like, get there. So. What do you think of, um, cause if, if you have a minute, I'll tell you about a quick experience that I had yeah. many years ago. Um, this is before I knew anything about any of this stuff. And, uh, before I started like studying NDEs and all this. So back when I was in my twenties and, um, <clears throat> so anyways, I come, I come home one day and my sister was on the phone in my mom's room. We were alone. There was, we're a big family, but my other siblings have moved out and my parents were on vacation. So it was just myself and my party aunt. time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I probably partied the night before and that would explain a lot because I was very tired and I just remember seeing her on the phone and then going to, you know, just kind of conk out on my bed. And so the room that she was in is a kind of, a, it was a long room and it was parallel to this hallway, which led to my room. Yeah. And so, so my room at the back, and these are old houses and the walls are really thick, but my room in the back was adjacent to, to where she was, except there was a bathroom in between. So what happened was I, I just kind of conked out on the bed with no intention of sleeping or anything. I just, just kind of lay there. And uh, the next thing I know, I start feeling like, well, what I know now is body paralysis. But at the time I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I just felt this like, pressure on my chest. And then it right. felt like I had vice grips on my head, you know, but it, it, but it wasn't painful. That's the weird thing. It wasn't yeah, yeah. painful. It was just uncomfortable because I wasn't recognizing it. You know, it's like, what is this? So 
So, and at the same time, I'm trying to vocalize and I realize like I can hear myself loud and clear, <laughs> but I know it's not coming out on the outside and nobody can yeah, yeah. But then the next thing I know, I'm on the floor heading down the hallway um, away from where I am. And <laughs> it felt like I was moving through quicksand. You know, um, I was not aware of a body or anything. I wasn't even thinking of that. All I was thinking about is, you know, how difficult it was to move. My goal was to get to where my sister was, you know, and scream for help. So I finally get there and I see her on the phone. I mean, I could see, I could see clear as day, everything. Yeah. I couldn't move very well, but I could see perfectly. And I was completely aware of what was my, what my surroundings, except again for my body, because I don't know, I guess for some reason, I just never it just didn't occur to me to to look you know yeah had i looked behind me as you are, are w well aware but for those that are watching had i looked behind me as i was crawling down that hallway for sure i would have woken up and i would have been back in my body if i saw yeah. myself but i didn't do that thankfully because now i can you know talk about this experience so anyways yeah. I, I listened to her conversation and uh clearly i wasn't going to get through to her and uh the next thing i know i'm back in my bed still kind of paralyzed but um yeah but coming out of it slowly and and i just wanted to get back to my sister to find out you know if she saw me oh yeah because she... at this point i still not really understanding what happened yeah know? so i go back and she's still on the phone and i'm explaining to her you know i was here yada 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 and i go you were talking about this and i was being really specific about her yeah. conversation and she's like how do you know that and like <laughs> anyways whatever she just ended up looking at me like i was crazy and that was the end of that until i start walking down the stairs like months later and i hear the tail end of some o oprah winfrey show and a guy is talking about uh, his obe that he had and yeah. he was explaining all the same details i could hear the, these details that he was talking about and i had still no idea to this day that i had an obe i just it was not you know right it was the furthest thing from my mind believe it or not at the time so uh, so i'm listening to this guy and i'm still thinking okay well this is cool but like no way that didn't happen to me you know? <laughs> <laughs> right they didn't put it together yeah you know? not until years later yeah it, it's it, can you describe sort of what the um the beings look like again i know i understand one of them just looked like it was the light that surrounded you yeah and that's there was another all being that was sort of more i didn't that. see it that's all that i saw was that okay. one being so and i actually and you know, it's funny because no one asked me for a long time. They said, I guess you could see behind you. And I didn't even think of that. I just knew that that was what was behind me, even though I was looking, I was looking this way at my body and the car. And I knew that other thing was behind me. So I don't know if you would say I could really see behind me. It just some, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Because, you know, I could say I was in my mind's eye, but it wasn't like that. It was like... Mm -hmm. It was, very it was more being a part of it in the same way you were asking, was it all knowing? It's like, well, no, it was just being a part of everything. And Did it feel like you just sort of assimilated, like you just sort of, you know, uh, just became part of the universe? You know yes. I mean? Yes. And, you know, it's hard because the words we use, it almost would seem like there's an effort, but it was just, it was more of a being thing mm -hmm. than a doing thing. So it was just you i was just a part of it and even now i say oh yeah now i can see everything i can see the whole universe and mm. so then it's like oh do i see what's there i don't necessarily see that right now but it is kind of a feeling like oh good there's you know there's that energy that is peace and love everywhere and that yeah. is the thing so you felt that that what it often the uh, other nd years speak of the uh, unconditional love feeling yes would you equate it with that yeah. yeah i would and even that it's like no that's not quite it because it's it unconditional means that there's something that's conditional and this was so unconditional that it wasn't I see what you mean. Yeah. if I you know it. what i mean it, and yeah. even when i say that i connect into it it's like oh that's yeah. the thing you know and that's yeah. what i want and um and so ha have you been able to sort of get there on yeah i can yeah. When I'm working, it's like that. And even now when I'm doing this, it's like every time I mention it, like part of me wants to go. You feel it. Oh, yeah, yeah, float away. So, yes. Yeah, that's incredible. So I do, I mean, I do journal writing every day. I do Tai Chi most days. I meditate every day. 
Mm -hmm. And sometimes during meditation, I accomplish that, but definitely doing the journal writing and the Tai Chi and the meditation, I get in a better place to be able to do that more. Mm -hmm. So I can't always, I mean, people ask me about meditation and they don't meditate because oh, I'm not good at it. I've been meditating almost every day for 40 years and I'm still not good at it every day. So like today and what seems to be happening a lot lately, it takes a while for me to get to that place. There's been times when it's like, oh, I close my eyes, I'm there. Mm-hmm. And now it's just seems to be, I have to even sit there. Sometimes I have to even open my eyes now because all this stuff starts coming up in my head and that's not what I want. So I open my eyes and then at some point the energy comes in. It's like, ah, oh. mm, that's what yeah. happens. Nice. And without your body being damaged, the, I think... I think so, yeah. As I mentioned, my NDE was just a kick in the butt because that there's no deny. I mean, I was letting my body get in the way of my spiritual growth, and so this showed me a way. I mean, I had some experiences before my NDE that were... Oh, yeah? I, you know, I often, you know, I think about it like, what if, and I wonder if I was really honoring my spiritual self, would I have had to have a near-death experience? So, and I mean, some, I've had such amazing experiences after that. Um, it, it's not like my NDE was the greatest one. It was definitely a thing that after that, I just started meeting so many people. You know, it was like, there was no avoiding it at that point. You know, that was the thing that changed most in my life right then. Everything is how do I learn more to be in that, god's loving inside of me and then sometimes it is how do i do that inside of me and be strong and set boundaries in the world because not everyone is there that is for sure Mm -hmm. and so but it is that spiritual growth and learning is every second every upper everything is an opportunity for that so i look at it that way is there anything that you want to uh leave our listeners with any any advice um well definitely do the work And, you know, don't, if you have any spiritual gifts, don't take it for granted. And if you have any gifts in anything, don't take it for granted. But, you know, I I think it's really, I mean, meditation and journal writing are probably the two most important things. And, um, you know, do things to clear yourself energetically, keep your body healthy. I mean, this is the greatest gift and the greatest responsibility. So I encourage people to do that. And, um, you know, I spend hours every day clearing my energy, taking care of my body, meditating, strengthening, learning. It just, that is, and you don't have to do meditation perfectly. If you sit there and your mind's blah, 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 the whole time, you're still sitting there and taking that time. It's, That's you right. still get benefit from it. Yeah, I agree with you. And that's some really good advice. So it's good to have like a toolbox of a lot of different things. Sometimes you might know intuitively what to do. Sometimes it's just a matter of, well, let me try this and see if I feel a clearing taking place. At the end of the day, trusting your intuition, I think, is really golden. It is. And to understand sometimes our, you know, we have our ego (laughs) comes in and tricks us. So it's... I don't know, but we need our ego. So there's a certain part that's humility. There's a certain part. Well, saying that you can't think you can beat the negativity. So mm-hmm. it, there's a humble approach to it. If you think, you know, I was talking about the positive things in spirit. There are demons and entities and things like that also that are. <clears throat> so you can't like go like this to them. It is kind of like you call in the light and just dear God, please help me kind of thing. So, and then you can imagine those things leaving. Well, you, you, you brought something up very interesting just now. And that's the whole like uh, notion of, of heaven. Well, not heaven, sorry, of hell and demons. I mean, I associate demons with hell. Yeah. I I personally am not really, um, 
I don't want to offend anybody that's experienced, you know. A, yeah, yeah. You know, well, I, I think I agree but, with what you're about to say. So okay, so we don't have to go there really. I just uh, I was curious about your opinion of whether or not. Yeah, I don't. Me, think... I think it's a, a, and people. There's an easy argument there. Like I, I could say, you know, it's something that you know, depending on your headspace, you might have you might have manifested a hell version for yeah. yourself. And, and, and people can argue that so easily, like, you know, how could they possibly thought of the things that they experienced? And, and if, if they manifested that, then what's not to say the, those that have a positive experience, they didn't just manifest all that. You know what I mean? Now that's not yeah. my personal belief in the matter, but. Uh, well, my belief is there's no like eternal damnation, hell kind of thing. There are pretty negative things people get caught in and, um, so i mean some i just see things around people and i know when i do what i do to clear them off they mm -hmm. feel better and some people physically get better so that is something that i know um, there are very negative levels of consciousness people get caught in um, so you know in one way there's no way to prove any of this stuff except from people's experience so if yeah. when i'm working with someone and i see these negative things around myself and all of a sudden it's like gone and i feel oh what a relief or they feel better when someone physically gets better that is proof you know what yeah. i mean feeling better you could always say well it could be all in your head but if someone like with that woman who had the miscarriage she got better she had so a couple of years after that she had a baby boy so that's yeah. like that's a real thing you know so part of it was getting the negative stuff off of her some of it was balancing her energy in her body yeah. Um, yeah. i mean there are so many things that are invisible even love we feel it we know it our emotions are invisible mm -hmm. you know even our thoughts we accept them so they're just you know we could talk about jesus or we could talk about muhammad or you know all these things there's there's no way to prove it but mm -hmm. people's experience is enough to prove that good stuff yeah. look i really appreciate your time uh oh yeah it's great it's nice talking to you yeah nice talking yeah to you, you had too, some right? cool experiences too so you know yeah. it's you know it's good to talk to someone who yeah. isn't just <laughs> scientific i mean i th yeah. believe in scientific but you know when you have experiences it's it adds a whole new dimension to, of understanding to it. Yeah, definitely. And it was great to bounce it off someone like yourself as well. It's uh, it's the first time I've actually bounced this stuff off of. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Had an NDE. Yeah. So very cool. I really appreciate it. I wish you well. And um, we'll let everyone know how they can get, get in touch with you. Okay. If, uh, yeah. Yeah. Healing uh, if they want to learn more about you. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, blessings to you and your family. And thank uh, you. Same to you. We'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.